Today I explain in my best English the Team Fork. It's a model I designed to structure progression in team development. You can use it as a team coach or facilitator or team leader if you are improving collaboration in your group. You need a model to structure and measure progression. That's my point. What is your model? There is Tuckman, of course, but I think these days we are living in a new reality. We are living in a multi-layered reality. And that means that in a group, especially in groups, different layers are coming together. There is the task-oriented collaboration, of course, but there is also the personal development of each individual in the group. This personal development is part of collaboration and has to be respected in its own terms. Besides the persons, the individuals, there is the group identity, the biography and the group dynamics. This is another layer of existence, the identity of the group, the summing up of all interactions. And there is another layer even, the organization or the larger whole in which the group is embedded. It can be a neighborhood or a professional discipline, for example. All these different layers of existence are embedded in each other and have to be respected. So I came up with uh, uh, five tracks of development we have to distinguish. The, the first one, something we already know, is the task-oriented collaboration, which I call the project, project management, for example. Uh, it is task-oriented and focused on an outcome. We can improve our task-oriented collaboration and become a high-performance team, for example. That's something we keep in the fork model. But uh, parallel with the, the tasks is the personal development of each individual. And uh, when I'm working, I'm sitting in a circle. And in that circle, um, we share uh, our opinions about a topic. There is always a topic at hand. And people who are sitting in the circle, they share their opinions about the topic. Uh, it's about their values, their opinions, their beliefs, but also shortcomings, challenges. Each person in the group has its personal development and we are going to share this in an authentic and vulnerable way. So in fact, this line of development, which is the uh, individual contribution to the team collaboration, uh, each uh, individual has its own personal development, its own progression as a, being a good member of the team. That's something uh, which is very new, that's to accept the, that individuals can keep track with their own development and their own conscience. Besides individuals, so there is the group identity. Uh, when I uh, ask uh, about uh, who are you as a group, often uh, groups uh, refer to their functional definition. They uh, uh, refer to the chart, the organizational chart, for example. Uh, they say we are the R&D team, or we are the sales team, or we are uh, 4.0 uh, team because they are working on the fourth floor, for example. But identity, group identity, is much more about the existential meaning of a group, the psychological experience they have about themselves. It is, a, for example, uh, they can have an image of being together as a, 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 a force to, to create new uh, pioneering things. So uh, the, uh, the group has also a narrative uh, with the past and the future. They have uh, challenges. They have group dynamics. So there are uh, different methods I use, different practices to help a group to give words, to give language and imagine what uh, really the identity of the group is. Then the group is also situated in larger holes. A larger holes are part of the group collaboration. They are not an outside context. The larger hole, which is, for example, the organization, is really the foundational uh, motivation to, to act and to be something. It's because the embeddedness in larger holes that groups experience a higher purpose. It's not only the outcome of an 
action-oriented uh, collaboration, there is also meaning by uh, generating an embeddedness in larger holes. And the uh, group as a whole has its contribution to the group to the larger whole development. Individuals can feel at home in a larger whole in the organization, for example, and the project has to contribute also to the development of the larger whole. So this embeddedness is really respected. Then the last uh, line of progression is self-guidance. And the, reflex, the reflection on self-guidance has become very important these days because um, we uh, have a, a changed opinion about leadership and management and we want teams to be self-organizing. But this is a huge challenge for teams because they have to, they can improve their ability to guide themselves in uh, collaboration. First of all, there is the, um, the collaboration in action-oriented, but there is also uh, a self-guidance concerning the respect for the personal development. And that's really a, a, a totally new challenge that the groups can guide themselves in respecting the, uh, the creating a space for personal development for each individual. Uh, there is the self-guidance concerning the group identity, uh, creating a narrative and reflecting on who we are and who we want to be. And there is the uh, reflection on the um, who, uh, what is our higher purpose. Uh, so the groups can improve in how they are uh, dealing with their own performance on the different layers. So when I'm working in a group, this is the model to structure progression, but I use a process. As a team coach, we have a process. It's an agile ritual I created in seven steps. The first step is to uh, determine the focus and have a nice setting of a circle. We are sitting in a circle, not uh, behind tables. And uh, the circle gathering uh, is around a topic at hand. There's always something lying in the middle of the circle. In the second step, we define together the common ground rules. And that's the first responsibility uh, a, a group can take about its own uh, performance. A third step is that we share all individual contributions uh, about the relationship with the topic. And that takes a long time because we are going to listen to each other and coach each other to be transparent and to express their own uh, reflection, their own relationship with the topic. The fourth uh, step is the group identity. What does that mean uh, for who we are and who we want to be as a group? And then the fifth step is the higher purpose. What does that mean for our contribution to the development of the larger whole? And it is only in the sixth step that we are coming back to the action, to the action-oriented collaboration with a specific outcome. So the project is embedded in all those other layers, the individuals, the team identity, and the larger whole. And it is at the end we reflect on the improvement in self-guidance. So this seven steps uh, in the circle gathering is for me an agile ritual with respect for the multi-layered reality that is uh, now present in each group. In my book, I uh, explain the fourth model, but I also sum up all the different practices for each track of development.